Picoscope 7, version 7.0.114, Channel Options and Probe Choices. This video is sponsored by AES Wave. In this video, we're going to look at all the channel options available to you. I'm going to start with the A channel. And the very first part here under Vertical allows us to choose whether we want that channel off or on, manually choose the voltage, or automatically choose the voltage. So if I put it on automatic, it will choose this plus or minus 100 volt scale. If I put it on manual, I can choose a different scale, such as this 50 volt scale, which gives me an over range. The AC and DC coupling creates an AC filter which impacts the way the pattern looks. Now typically we don't use AC coupling except for some very specific applications, but watch how the line right here will move to zero when I do my AC coupling. Additionally, if I add a maximum voltage measurement here at the bottom, and I switch back to DC mode, first of all note that the AC mode is at 42.34 volts, and if I put it on DC, this is actually a DC signal, the maximum voltage is actually 56.26, but the AC coupling has made an adjustment and moved it down to the zero line, affecting the maximum voltage. If we put it on invert, that flips the pattern over. Now when I first put it on invert, it's going to start jumping across the screen because the trigger is set on a positive value. Once I move my trigger down into an area that you can see, you can tell the pattern has now been inverted. The second tab over is the probes tab. This is where you select the type of probe that you're using. If you're using a straight voltage scale, then you can do a times one. However, if you need to measure higher voltage, you might need to use an attenuator. If I choose the attenuator, there is a 10 to 1 attenuator you could use or a 20 to 1 attenuator. Now if we go back to the vertical, you'll see the available voltage now goes up to a plus or minus 400 and down to a plus or minus 10 volts. If we change that probe to a 20 to 1 attenuator, you'll see that the available voltage scales are only plus or minus 200 or plus or minus 400. This allows us to measure high voltage readings. Down below here are your current amp probes. If I want to measure current amp in a 20 or 60 amp probe, now it's going to ask me if I want to use a 20 amp scale or the 60 amp scale. That of course is a selection on your amp probe. Switching back to vertical, you'll now see that we have amperage values that we can choose from. If I switch to the B channel, we can now see that I'm measuring an amperage waveform. And you can see right now it's measuring it in millivolts. And there's a conversion you can do to convert millivolts into amperage. However, it's much easier to come over to the probe section, choose the proper probe, choose the proper scale, and then now you'll see that we have a plus or minus 2 amp scale, and this allows us to measure this without doing that math conversion. If I choose a scale that's inappropriate for this waveform, such as a plus or minus 1, we will get a channel over range. If I choose a plus or minus 5 amps, we still get that pattern. However, it's not the most appropriate pattern to be viewing something that is measuring a little over 1 amp, but less than 2 amps. Depending upon what you're measuring, you can choose additional probes, such as a high amperage probe up to 2000 amps. You can choose a secondary ignition, such as a clamp over a wire or a coil over plug adapter. There are temperature adapters and pressure adapters. Notice that when you choose the WPS500X, it will give you the three different ranges that are selectable on that pressure sensor. You can measure up to 5 PSI or up to 500 PSI. Depending upon the scale that's selected on the probe, there's also the option to add probes or to even edit probes. If we move over to the DSP tab, this is where we can activate a low-pass filter. This is a non-destructive filter 
that can remove some of the noise. If I click on active, you will see that it has filtered out a whole bunch of this noise. And it is often adjustable by changing the frequency, which impacts the pattern and how much noise we see. Additionally, the low pass filter can be activated even after stopping the waveform. You can turn it on and turn it off and make your necessary adjustments. The last tab is the display tab. This tab allows you to rename your channel, change the color of your channel. Let's say we want to have it this color. Back to red. And it also allows you to do the offset that we did earlier in this lesson plan. I can simply type in a number. I can do a minus 25 and I can move that down here. Or I can simply go back to zero. Additionally, we have a vertical scaling feature that can increase the size. For a quick example, if I move the scale down to right about there, You'll notice that I lose all this space up at the top where I can't make any measurements. However, if I come up to the scale and do a times two scale, I gain all that back almost like a vertical zoom. If I decide I want to come over here and set this to a minus 25, that'll put my zero down at the very bottom and put the full two amps at the very top. To reset this, click on the scale in the center, enter one, and you're back to your position. However, your offset is now at a minus 50, so let's go ahead and reset that as well. And now we're back to the center part of our screen with a plus two at the top and a minus two at the bottom.